Guys, how are we doing? Glenn here from the Beardy Man Craft Beer Channel. Thanks very much for joining me once again on another home brew episode. Now, in today's episode, I'm going to be brewing a new American Pilsner. Not for the reason that it's a style of beer that I like. I actually haven't tried this style of beer, but more so to give myself a new challenge, to move away from brewing the ales, the pale ales, the IPAs, the stouts, the imperial stouts and all the rest. Just park that for a little while, give myself a new challenge, filling it from the yeast starter all the way through to tasting it at the very end. I've asked a friend of mine who is a national home brew judge here in Ireland to come over at the very end and for him to give me his unbiased opinion on the actual new American Pilsner. So what exactly is this new American Pilsner for those of you who don't know? Well, the new American Pilsner includes dank, citrusy American hops which combine the aggressive hop character of an IPA with the drinkability and the finesse of a German Pilsner. What I'm trying to achieve with this is a sweet malty Pilsner balanced with a firm hop bitterness and a clean floral finish. So before I go on, I think it's probably best that we go through the actual recipe on this one. Okay guys, just to take a look at some details on this new American Pilsner. First of all, the batch size is 24 litres. The boil time on this one, 90 minutes. I'm estimating my original gravity to be in and around 1.044. I estimate my final gravity to be in and around, hopefully, 1.008, all going well. The malt that I'll be using, I'm gonna be using 100% base malt. This is five kgs that I'll be using of German Pilsner and the EBC on that is around <clears throat> 3.5. So 100% and it, this is pre-crushed. To have a look now at the hop additions, there are a number of hop additions going in on this one. And remember, these are the dank citrusy American hops that I'll be using and they're all pellet hops as well. I'll be adding pellets throughout the boil and I'll be dry hopping at the end. So to have a look at the, um, the hops, 13 grams of citra will be added to the boil at 60 minutes. Six grams of Columbus at 30 minutes. 15 grams of Columbus again at 20 minutes. And then 25 grams of Cascade at 10 minutes. Then at hop stand or flame out, I'll be adding 18 grams of citra. I'll leave them to ferment and then ending or near the end of fermentation, I will be dry hopping and I'll be adding 18 grams of Centennial and 18 grams of citra. And I'll be leaving that to dry hop for five days. The yeast that I'll be using on this is the Y yeast Bavarian Lager, and that's 2206. It's the Smack Pack yeast. I have one pack here that I hope to increase the cell count um, from 100 billion up to about 200, 250 billion, because I'll be making a yeast starter. I'm all set up here with my yeast starter. So I'll be film filming from the very start, putting together the, uh, the yeast starter all the way through to tasting at the very end. So that's essentially it guys. Without further ado, let's brew. Let's go! Okay guys, my brewing water and water treatment. There are two things that I do to treat my water. I have 30 liters of just standard tap water here. I need 17 liters for my mash and I need 17 and a half liters for my sparge. The first thing that I do is I remove the chlorine in the water. I use sodium metabisulfate, AKA candom tablets. I'll take one of these tablets, cut it in half, crush down that half, add a little bit of water, and then add it to my overall batch of water required for the, uh, the brew day. Guys, that's the way I do it. I know there's other different ways people will treat the water, but this is the way I do it. The other thing then would be the pH. The pH level in my area here in Middleton Cork is about seven, and I wanna reduce that down to between 5.5 and six. So I take my pH 
uh, reader. I'll take a reading of the, uh, the water there, see what that is. I would use phosphoric acid. I take about a milliliter and a half using a syringe and add it then to my overall uh, water and then take another reading just to make sure it is in between the 5.5 and 6 mark. Now, some people have asked me in the past, do you really need to bother with pH? I use them to bother, but it does make a difference. It does make a difference to the actual body and taste of the beer. I've noticed a, uh, a difference. Many of the enzymatic and chemical reactions that happen during the brewing process are affected by pH. For example, the conversions of starch into sugar during the mash is very dependent by the pH. Extraction of harsh tannins during the sparge can also be avoided with the proper pH. And then hop isomeration and beer stability are also affected by pH. So I've taken all of that on board and this is now the way I treat my water. Okay guys, so I've added my 17 litres of treated water, just in case now dropping in my grain bin. Just sit that into place and just let it drop down. So the temperature of my water here is 65 degrees. I get my top overflow pipe, just connect that on top of the bottom overflow pipe and then grab my grain stopper. Place that in on the top overflow pipe and just make sure that's all in place. Now I can start adding my grain. So just take this in sections. This is my 5 kg of uh, German Pilsner malt. Add in a bit. Stir that around just to make sure that we have no dough balls. Handy place for my paddle here on the side, just on one of those hooks. And just stirring that around, just making sure that I don't go into the uh, center, that I don't dislodge that upper overflow pipe, which I've done in the past. And just add the grain, as I said, in small batches. And then I'm just stirring that in as I go. The smell there now is really delicious. I've had a, uh, a few friends mentioning the, um, the smell from the the, the the mashing in, um, it's really lovely. It's almost like it's breakfast time. Again, just taking it in small batches, stirring as I go, just making sure that all that grain comes in contact with the water. And the grain fodder will keep that temperature at the set 65 degrees that's required for this mash. And that's almost it. Now I take my top overflow, sorry, my top perforated plate. Just give that a rinse because it helps it just slip down into the uh, grain basket easier. Just get it in place and whoop. And then just make sure that, that that's just resting. I'm just resting that on top of the, uh, the grain bed, not even pushing it down, just making sure that it's actually, it's level on top of the grain bed. That looks good. I can take away my grain stopper, grab my overflow inlet, just sit that on top of the top upper overflow pipe, push it down so it's connected with the um, perforated plate. That looks good. Just grab my lid, Pop that on and then just attach then the recirculation pipe just to the side pipe then. And we're good then to start the mash on this. So mash time on this new American Pilsner is one hour. So while that's mashing away, I thought I'd take a moment to show you my DIY electric kettle. I've basically taken my old 60 liter pot that had the valve on the front of it. I have added on the inside an element and onto the side 
a wellless thermo well, and a junction box, which is connected then to the old controller unit that came with the uh, grain fodder. I basically take the thermometer, and plug that into the side and hook it all up and turn it on. Add then my treated water for sparging. In this case, about 21 liters. I don't need all of that, but just making sure that I have enough. And then it doesn't really take that long with the, uh, the lid on top to, uh, to heat up. You can see it's just heating up there now at the moment. And that's all good to go for my sparging later. Guys, I have four minutes left on this mash, but I just wanted to show you the clarity of the wart. If I just lift up the lid, if you can see in there now, I'm very happy with that. That's really nice and clear. I don't normally get this um, level of clarity with, let's say, ales and so forth. What I'll do is I'll just get a close-up shot of that so you can see there now how clear that is. That's really good. So yeah, four minutes left on this. All good. Okay, so mash has finished. I can take off my recirculation arm. Grab my lid. And I can get ready to go sparging now. I can take out the overflow inlet, which is very hot out, <laughs> and then just push this down until it sits on the grain bed. Literally just rests, no force required. Take this and just, yep. That's not gonna go down any further, so we leave that there and I'm ready to go sparging. Okay, so the required sparge water temp for this new American Pilsner is 73 degrees Celsius. And I'm gonna use the meter on the uh, grain fodder connect box to adjust as I add that sparge water. And I require a total of 17.5 liters, but I've much more than that in my heater. Pretzel. Arge finished, remove grain bin. Now what I'm doing here is I'm basically taking a sieve and removing the kind of top protein buildup before we kickstart our boil. Depending on how much, sometimes I just stir this in. Yeah, take out some and then grab my paddle and just stir it. The rest of it there. Okay, so that's a nice rolling boil set for 90 minutes. My first hop addition, I'll drop in at the 60 minute mark. Okay, 60 minute hop addition. We have 13 grams of citra pellets and the alpha acid on these guys 14.6 and this is really just for bittering that's my 60 minute mark okay now at 30 minutes we have six grams of columbus and alpha acid on these guys 15.6 Now, just stir that around. Not convinced I'm getting the, the best efficiency from this little um, hop spider. I think I should uh, upscale on the, uh, the old hop spider. Another day, another day. Roger. 
Right, so 20 minute hop edition. We have 15 grams of Columbus. Uh, again, 15.6 on the alpha acids. Drop them in. In fairness, you get a lovely um, rolling boil from the, uh, the grain fodder. Nice, consistent rolling boil. Okay, so my world flock tablet at 15 minutes. Bop that in. And that will help to uh, clear the beer, clear the wort. And now my 10 minute hop edition. We have 25 grams of Cascade with an alpha acid of eight. Drop them in there. Lovely smell. Mm. Okay, so my boil has almost come to an end. Boom. I have 18 grams of citra. Pop them in. Alpha acid, 14.6. Okay, so just attaching my counterflow war chiller. Then just want to grab a jug and I'm just going to run off some of that wort into this jug. The temperature, my wort temperature is 99 degrees Celsius, so that should be enough to sanitize the wort chiller. Just set my timer now to about 20 minutes, should do it to sanitize it. Just run it through the wort chiller. That goes running, nice. That'll heat up, just pop that into the grain fodder. Leave that now for 20 minutes, just to sanitize the wort chiller. Okay, just adding some star sand solution now to my fermenter bucket. Uh, and just sanitizing my paddle and my hop net. Drop on the cap, give that a good shake. Once all sanitized then I can just take the net there and just connect it on top of the fermenter bucket. Just on the outer rim, half it there if it connects for me. And that's all good to go. Connect my cold water in. Turn down the valve on the out wart pipe. Starsan my tomato. Just checking the temperature then of the, the warp now. We should be around, that's 18, that's nice. Good to go with that. 19, yeah. Start my pump, just adjust that valve just to make sure that the wort coming out is just trickling out and the in cold water is going in at a good good speed but the the wort out i want that just to trickle into my thermometer thermometer my fermentation bucket thermometer okay so that's a good flow rate, happy enough with that. Just want to make sure that it remains at the 18 or 19. 19 should be fine uh, Celsius and ends my hot water for washing later on. So I just take a thermometer here, sterilized or sorry, sanitized thermometer. Check that, we're at 18, happy with that. Yep. Give my hands a bit of a spray before I remove the hop net from the fermenter. Slowly grab that, pull it out, we should be all right. Yeah, that's good. And just give that a bit of a shake. And then that be do. Yep, drop it into my bucket there. So even with the hop spider, you can see the hop residue around the filter at the bottom. And our gravity, we are at 
0.049 on our OG. So before adding the yeast, I just want to give this wort a good mixing around, just to give it loads of aeration. Just to give it a good foamy head on the top. Now I can take my yeast starter and slowly add this in on top, making sure that I don't drop in the stir bar at the bottom, the magnetic stir bar, and no, we're okay. Get as much of that in as possible. Okay, I've just discovered a boo-boo. I just added the yeast to wort at 18 degrees Celsius, forgetting that I'm not making a nail or a stout. In fact, I'm working on a new American Pilsner and I have my homebrew log in front of me and I have the recipe in front of me and I'd never checked it and I was supposed to chill the beer to nine degrees Celsius. I'm not really sure what implications that will have at the end our final stage of the beer. I'm sure John will tell me when he comes over. But I do have a, a unit up in the shed that allows me to control the, uh, the temperature for fermentation. And the, the schedule on this one, to me anyway, is a little bit uh, unusual. I've never had to really play around with temperature schedules before for fermentation. So for two days, it's set at nine degrees Celsius. For three days, it's set at 10 degrees Celsius. That's then up to to 13 degrees Celsius for seven days, after which I dry hop. And then for three days, it's set at its maximum temperature of 18 degrees Celsius. After which I crash the beer right down to three degrees Celsius for 10 days. So hopefully my initial boo-boo there didn't screw me up. You feckin' Egypt, clean. Yeah. Right, so guys, I've been fermenting this new American Pilsner for a few days now. Two days at nine, three days at 10 degrees, seven days at 13 degrees. So I'm now due to dry hop. So I've measured out my, uh, my dry hops. I have 18 grams of Centennial and 18 grams of Citra. Here, ready to go. I've just put my little hot net into a star sand solution and I'll throw in the, uh, the hops into the, uh, the hot net and put them into the, um, the fermenter. So after, after this then I ferment, I bring the temperature up to either 19 or 20 degrees for three days and then I crash it out then for 10 days. So I've just, um, I've just drawn off a sample and I have taken, I've taken a reading, gravity reading, <clears throat> and currently it stands at 1.014, which is good. Uh, I need to bring it down to 1.009. So yeah, we're, we're, on, we're on target, and it actually tastes really nice. It's, it is a little bit cloudy, um, and I'm sure we get around that with the, uh, the crashing of three degrees Celsius. Um, so all I'm left to do for now is to, uh, is to dry hop. Is there anything else that I've forgotten? No, we'll dry hop um, and then we'll crash it out and then uh, we'll see how we get on after the, uh, the, the 10 days of three degrees Celsius. See you then. Fair play to you lads for sticking with me. Thank you very much. Okay, so this beer has been lagering for the last five days behind me in my lagering chamber, AKA Dundeal, 30 euro fridge second hand. What Eager Beaver wants to do now is to draw off another sample, test first of all the gravity. We should be in and around the 1.012 mark, all going well. The next thing I want to do is check the clarity of the beer. I want to see how much of that haze is still in suspension. After that then, I want to check the aroma to see how much the dry hopping has come through on this beer. And then of course then, the big taste, see how we are on taste. So give us a few moments, I'll draw off a sample and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so our hydrometer reading 
is saying that we are at 1.012. It is what it is, and I'm happy with that. It could drop a little bit more, and I'd be even happier. That's the first thing. The next thing is the clarity. It is looking very well. Now, at this stage, there is still some haze in suspension, which I would expect, or hope, that will drop out over the next couple of days. All going to plan. We'll give it a, we'll give it a smell and just check now for aroma. Hmm. Yeah. There's a lovely kind of hop character coming through and it's well balanced actually with the Pilsner malt. So that's certainly good. I'm just wondering now, will that be consistent? Will that stay in the beer over the next five days or will more of that kind of aroma drop out? We'll see at the, uh, the end. And of course now we just need to uh, taste it. Mm, that's really good. I'm really happy with that. Again, very similar to the aroma, the taste, I'm getting a lot of hop character, um, but more so actually, there is a lot of that Pilsner malt. There's a nice balance between the two again in the, uh, the taste and there's good body to it as well. So yeah, so I'm happy with our five days so far. Talk soon. Okay guys, fermentation is now complete on this new American Pilsner. Now it's dreaded decision time. Do I bottle or do I keg? I think you can clearly see that I've already made up that decision. I am going to bottle for the simple reason that it's the beginning of December and I want to have this ready for around Christmas time. I want to take it to a few parties. I want to give a few samples to friends. So the decision here is bottling. Normally I would go with um, kegging. Now, the last time I kegged the beer, I had a slight issue in that when I kegged it, when the beer went in, it was lovely for a couple of days, but I mucked around with the regulator on the CO2 a little bit more than I should have, and I overcarbed it. And what happens there is then it takes, the beer takes on this kind of damp cardboard um, flavor aftertaste, which isn't nice. It's still drinkable, but you know what? you don't enjoy it because the, the hoppiness and that hop character is kind of completely wiped from it. So I'm gonna leave the, the keg um, for a little while. I have washed these bottles and I'm ready to go to sterilize the bottles and then I'm gonna basically sanitize them. I have 500 milliliters and I have 350, I can't remember how many, but I, I used the uh, Brewer's Friend bottle calculator. To, uh, to work out how many I need. I have either 24, 25 liters. Bloody hell, I can't remember. I must check my recipe. Hold on now. 25 liters, 24 liters. I have 25 and 24 down. It's one or the other, maybe 24. But anyway, the, the bottom line is I have more bottles than I need, which is good. What I do when I'm washing my bottles, guys, just to let you know, this isn't a how-to video. This is just the way I do things, okay? I know we have all different ways of doing it. This is the way I do it. I use um, a product called W5 Oxy. Um, there's, no, there's no smell off it, and it's basically for washing clothes, but it is absolutely perfect for washing um, bottles, and I think I get that in either Lidl or Aldi here in Ireland. Lidl, okay. So that's what I use. I basically steep the bottles for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, half an hour, um, and then rinse them, thoroughly rinse them. The next thing I do, which I haven't done yet, so I've only washed them, is I use VWP cleaner sterilizer. And I use that then to, uh, to basically just give the bottles another rinse in a, uh, in a sterilizer. Once I'm done then sterilizing the bottles, I then take my star sand and make up a star sand solution. And I just then pour the star sand into the bottle and then pour it back out. And then just before I fill it up then, obviously that's gonna run down the bottle and sit in the, um, in the base. I just pour out that again and it's, it's ready to go. It's ready for me to uh, fill the bottle up. What else do I have? I have some more bits and pieces over here. Oh, I just grabbed them. Stick that there. I have my bottling wand. I have my caps. I'm going with blue caps on this new American Pilsner. I'll tell you why now shortly. Um, 
I have my jug for sterilizing my caps, star sand, we'll do that later. I have two nets. I've always put in a net when I'm extracting the beer um, from the actual fer fermenter into the, uh, the bottle. And I might, I might think of actually doubling up with the, uh, the nets. I've no idea how the clarity is looking on this new American Pilsner. It's still in the fridge, I'll take it in now shortly. Um, but anything that I can do to kind of reduce that haze, even at this stage, after 10 days at three degrees Celsius, I'm sure it's clear and there's probably not a whole lot more I can do. Um, my auto siphon, large auto siphon. And then I have this kind of plant pot holder, which is handy for washing all of this stuff. Not the bottles now, just all the kind of the stuff for the, uh, the auto siphon and so forth. I have my brewing sugar, my dextrose. I have my bottle brush. And I have my bottle capper. And I have, not quite sure why that's in there. No, I don't know, let's put that aside. And that's essentially it. So I'm ready now to go sterilizing my bottles. I'm gonna fill up my bucket here with water and uh, make up a, um, a solution of the sterilizer. And I think I leave it for five to 10 minutes. So I'll just leave the bottles in there for five to 10 minutes and give them a, a quick rinse. And then we go then with the, um, the star sand. We'll take in the beer. We'll have a look at this beer. We'll sample it. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Look, if, it, if I'm not expecting it to be really crystal clear. I'm expecting it to be hazy. I don't know why. It's just that expectation is on my shoulders. Let's see what happens. Okay, so just grab some water for this VWP uh, sterilizer solution. And then I'll pop the, uh, the bottles in that for about eight minutes. Nice warm water. Now I will put in a few teaspoons of this. One to two teaspoons per gallon. Just pop the bottles in there and give them a, a bath for about eight minutes, as I say. Okay, here are my caps in a bath of star fan. Just grab those bottles and pour out that VWP mixture. Then I give them a good rinse with cold water. Run cold water through them once or twice and give them a good old shake. Make sure that's all rinsed out. What I do is I get my star sand and basically fill each bottle up right up to the top. Grab that bottle and just pour that back into the jug. Then grab a sanitized cap and pop that on the top. Okay guys, so I've taken in the fermenter after 10 days of crashing at three degrees. I'm ready to go bottling, but before I do, I've just dropped a glass into some star sand solution. I wanna see what the clarity is like, and obviously what the aroma is like, and what the taste is like. Without further ado, let's taste this brew. Okay, pop her open. Okay, very happy with clarity. Very happy with clarity, yeah. No haze, the crashing at three degrees for 10 days has obviously worked. I was a little bit worried about that. So, clarity, there we go, looking good. Now what you see, that haze is not haze, it's actually, it's uh, condensation. So we're all good there. Okay, there's a little bit of haze in there. That's fine, I'm sure that'll uh, drop out. Hop character is there, but not in your face. Okay, that's fine. That could be because as well, it's at three degrees, I don't know. Um, but it looks good, it smells good, it doesn't smell bad. Um, 
Now it's a sample. Yeah, that's ready to bottle. I can actually drink all of that right now. No joke, not being biased or anything. I could actually drink all of this. Not all of it, but some of it. But you know what? I'll bottle away and uh, I'll enjoy it later on around Christmas. Okay, now for the dreaded bottling. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is boil up some water for my dextrose sugar. Measure it out there, I need 168 grams. Lumi. Pour that in to my boiling water. Knock off the heat. Have a wooden spoon. And then mix that solution around, making sure that there's no bits that all of that sugar has dissolved into that half cup of water. That's all I have here, just a, a half cup. That should be enough just to dissolve all the sugar into boiling water. Make sure it's all sterilized and then I can pour this into my beer. Slowly pouring into the beer and then I'll just grab my paddle, just give that a mix around. Very, very slowly. Okay, I am disturbing some sediment I know, but that will fall out of the solution when I, um, when I leave it to condition for a week and then I'll obviously cool it down again to about five or six degrees. Hopefully the, uh, the beer will be crystal clear. Grab my net just to make sure I catch any little bits before they go into uh, the bottle. And pop in my auto siphon. Connect that then to my bottling wand. Okay, so the goal here is for the yeast to come alive again and eat that sugar that I've just put in to carbonate each of these bottles. Pour out the sanitizer that's in the bottom. And I'm basically filling up to about a, an inch to a half an inch away from the top of that bottle and then pop on another cap. And that's them all filled, ready to cap. Grab a bottle, grab me copper, place it over the top, push down, and voila. So here it is guys, my Roadhouse Blues new American Pilsner has now finished with conditioning after seven days at room temperature. At the start of the video I had said or mentioned that I would be asking my friend John um, to come over. John is a national beer tasting judge here in Ireland um, to come over and uh, give me his unbiased opinion on this beer. Now unfortunately John can't make it. John will be doing a review of the beer in one of my other videos now in 2018, um, but he's actually studying at the moment for a brewing course in CIT. So best of luck with that, John. And uh, yeah, it's a pity he can't be over tonight. I have, you can probably hear it on my voice, I've been under the weather for the, uh, for the past few days. I have a bit of a cold, um, so my senses aren't the best. But look, I need to publish this video. I need to crack on with it. We'll give it a taste now. This isn't the official taste. This is just so I can get this uh, video live on YouTube. I've been working away on this video for the last, I think it's like six or seven weeks. So it was a, a long drawn out process. And uh, my apologies for the amount of times I actually said new American Pilsner. I promise that's the last time you'll hear that uh, in this video. I looked at the video only the other day and I was like, oh my God, uh, yeah. Anyway, let's crack this open and see how we get on. It's a nice sound anyway.
Not sure if you can hear that. Could go more. I was very happy anyway with um, the carbonation and the, the clarity on this beer. It's fabulous. Um, and I already, I don't need, actually, I don't even need to smell it. I could actually, I could smell it coming out of the uh, the bottle. So uh, yeah, it's more, I think I get more of the malt like I did um, when we were fermenting. Um, and when I tasted it earlier on. But uh, yeah, like that looks, uh, that looks good. Uh, nice head on it too. I'm not sure how long the, uh, the head will stay for. Color, great color, great clarity. Yeah. Happy with the uh, happy with the aromas there. That balance has continued to stay. So the malt slash hops. Um, what hop? I dry hopped. Remember with Centennial, 18 grams and 18 grams of uh, Citra for five days. So yeah, that's coming through nicely on it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Of course, I'm probably. I'm probably going to say that anyway, but I really like that. I really, it's, it's, it's actually, the beer has turned out better than I, um, I would have hoped. Have a, a look at it there. So guys, that's, that's it. That's, uh, that's my beer and um, I'm very happy with it. So hopefully um, when John does a review of it on the end of one of my, uh, my later videos in 2018, um, hopefully he gives it the uh, the thumbs up as well. I hope it wasn't just one bottle out of a big batch that um, that was the, the best bottle. Guys, if you like what you see, subscribe below. And also you can follow me on my Instagram channel. It's the Beardy Man Craft Beers. Guys, thanks for watching and all the best.